Wow, beautiful song by uh, Pastor Flora. And a reminder that God is still with us. You know, she's saying that Ali, Ali Pompano, like he's right here with us. Even as we're making that transition from 2017 to 2018, the Lord's still with us. And if he is with us, then all is well with us. It doesn't matter where we've come from and what hasn't worked so far. The truth is that as long as God is in control, we are set as believers. Just now, help me um, uh, welcome in studio Dr. Clarion Clarkwood. He loves being called uh, Dr. Mukango. And uh, he's, all, he's coming all the way from the UK. Let's just get to know him and see uh, what we can get from him in terms of the testimony that um, uh, of what God has done for him as a musician and many other things. And um, he is here in studio with me. Doctor, welcome. Thank you very much, Lester. Good to be here. I'm happy I'm to have you. Good to be here. Good to be home. I'm Zambian. <laughs> Zambian name is Mukango in Kalamu, Imakando. Mukango? In Kalamu, Tao. Imakando. Tau. Yeah. Imakando. Yeah. The lion. The lion, that's how it is. The lion <laughs> of the tribe of Judah. Yeah. I, I, I like that. But then also maybe just to get to know you. Are we seeing your, uh, some of us, probably some people even as they are watching, they actually can see, you know, that this is the same face they have seen on, on, on YouTube. Yeah. You yeah. know, you've s sung uh, beautiful songs like uh, Into Your Throne, Throne Room, room yeah. and others. Yeah. But then I'm um, so excited to have you so we could just learn more Thank about you. you. Thank you. Um, you are a musician, but give us a bit of detail of what uh, other things that you are. Um, probably family background and other things. Okay. Um, uh, I have a family of two, my two kids and my wife. And uh, also I am a theologian and an apologist. Music comes as a byproduct of the things I do. Music is ingrained in my DNA. God just blessed me with it. I, I think so. I'm humble to think so. And also, my passion is really in the area of leadership, worship, and intercession. Okay. So I go around churches. We raise leaders based on your demography, the type of people you want to reach. We look at them. We look at their culture. We look at the things that are relevant to them, and we plan a leadership curriculum of some sort for you. And then we come over time to see how it's working. So um, um, that's one side of the things I do. I'm also into properties and uh, uh, um, um, I'm um, um, yeah, a businessman. I try art. to, I try to, I try to <laughs> learn into yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. That, that's wonderful. But then you've been frequenting Zambia of late and I'd love to know what's really the, the purpose for a visit. Thank you very much. In fact, I want to say a almost God bless you and thank you to my father, Bishop Imakando of Bread of Life Church International. If it wasn't for him and his visionary leadership, I wouldn't be in Zambia, in fact. Last August was the first time I was in Zambia because he saw me in Ghana doing what I do and he decided, look, come back home. So he brought me back home. I'm proud to, be call, to call myself a proud Zambian. <laughs> and on that note, I want to say a ginormous God bless you and a high salutation for His Excellency President Edgar Lungu and your leadership for the wonderful leadership things that are going on in the country that I can mm -hmm. attest to. God bless you and your leadership. We keep praying for you. So I want to thank my dad again, Bishop Mikando. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here a second time. This time I'm here for the youth conference and the first service and to work with the choir and the music and all that. And if you're somewhere, you don't have a church to attend, please do visit the Bread of Life, Bissaka, <laughs> Emmersdale. You're going to be blessed by the music, the worship and the word and the prayer. You're yes. calling everybody to your home. That's it. Wow. So you've come uh, probably predominantly to be part of the youth um, camp in December. Yes. Mm -hmm. That one and the 31st service and to be honest with, with you, the, the 31st, the crossover. The crossover service. And, uh -huh. and to be honest with you, to work with the music and worship department. Okay. Because I'm also into training. I'm also into like, bringing new talents out. Mm -hmm. I'm also into like, equipping the saints for the work of the music and worship ministry. See, God did not create us to worship him. That's one of the fallacies I grew up talking about. God did not create us to worship him. God created Clarify. us. Yes. God created us to reveal himself to us and through us. Our response to his revelation of who he is is what would make we surrender and sing songs and worship him. God's primary image, in, uh, a purpose in Genesis, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. Let them have dominion. I grew up thinking that God created us to worship. God did not create us he to worship. He didn't say let's create man, man to, to, to worship, to worship no. us. For them to have dominion, to be like us. I see. Now, out of God's revelation of who he is, his greatness. You bow down. You are surprised at his greatness, mm -hmm. that such a great, great king and God can love you. Mm -hmm. So you're natural. So for us human beings, our response it's is response. our worship. Mm -hmm. Your response is our worship. So singing, dancing, all those things is not worship. Worship is actually what we mean. So we're supposed to do it in spirit and in truth. And in theological studies, it's all saying that make sure what you're singing, what you're doing, what you're dancing, you're meaning it. Yeah, Otherwise, it's yeah, not worship. Yeah, true, true. That's very encouraging. Before we get to your... Um, um, 
musical background mm. and probably mm. teaching us a little more on worship. Just uh, t tell us, take us to your Christian testimony of how you just came to know the Lord. What oh, were the fantastic, circumstances? fantastic. In fact, I, um, I'm a child of a single parent, so I love all single mothers. God bless you, single mothers. You do a great job. And I was the one that was always out of the box. I won't think the box out of the black, black. Black is even posh to describe who I was. I was really nutty. I was the craziest, funniest guy in the whole community. And uh, uh, um, I loved my grandma who actually raised me. So she died. In the process, and when she died, I felt like I lost something. And some of my friends in the area had become born again at the time. So I gave my life to the Lord. But that is just a scheming of the story. Before I got born again, I was... You wouldn't want me to live in your community. So you wouldn't yes. want me to be in the same school with your kids. You were a bully. Bully? No, I wasn't a bully. I was a very kind, generous person. But I was a nutter. <laughs> in fact, I was a ridicule of the whole community. But there's only one elderly stranger man who believed in me. He said, this boy, you see that way, one day God is going to use him. So he kept mentoring me and talking to me and then blah, blah, blah. That's when you, when, it's when a long story. When you say you were nothing <laughs> and, you know, I mean, it's, it's I was surprising. a nutter. Oh, I was a I nutter. See, I, I was see. crazy. I was... Yeah, yeah, I get you it. You can't describe me. I mean, I was... Look, before I got converted, at a very early age, I was a spy. The child spy for the most notorious armed robbery gang. Oh. So, yes, I'll come to you. I'll play with your kids. You think they are kids playing, but I'm spying what the telly is. Spying what is. And I'll go and tell them in the night in Mount Operation. Really? What did they give me? Nothing. At the point, I was sleeping in cemetery, cemeteries on trees. Because I felt I was a tough guy. If I go home, my like, mom will beat me and stepdad will beat me. I said, no, 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 I'm, I ain't going to do that. So I started learning to take care of myself on the streets. So you had a family, but, you know, your character, you know, just pushed you out because you felt, I go home, I'm beaten for this, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay away. Not necessarily so. It was because I was the type who was creative and wouldn't fit the box. In fact, the extent of poverty we lived in also drove me to some of these things. You know, at a point, um, I had to do... All sorts of jobs to make money to even pay for my other siblings school fees oh that was the kind of heart i was so one elderly woman said you were like the new robin hood <laughs> you go and steal to help others yeah That's i'm thinking the mixture of that character you know like you're helping robbers you're you know doing all these crazy things crazy, but you still crazy, have that heart for crazy. your family and you know what everything i got out of that was to give to people and that's what blew my mind in fact my mom and my family's mind they're like what kind of but human of course being is we, this? No, we, we're not talking like it's the coolest thing to do. You no, no, steal, you no, 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 yeah, no, 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 not at all, not at all. Like, you, you saw the light at some point. Yes, the light came in, and in fact, I didn't find the light. The light found me. Amen, amen. The light found me and said, look, I can still use you. I surrendered everything. All of those things didn't go away, but I knew that I've taken a challenge. You see, because I'd been so on the reverse. But when I got converted, even my own family were my accusers. Mm -hmm. They thought I was pretending. They thought I was joking. They thought I was faking it. So I decided to take that as a challenge to prove to them that Christ really is our savior. He brings transformation. So from the day I gave my life to Christ, I wanted to prove to people a change is possible. Amen. And a true change is real. I'm a product of God's grace, a sinner saved by grace, transformed and still being transformed mm -hmm. into the image of Christ. So the beauty thing is that because I was so, at some, so much of a nutter and a crackhead, and a, I did drugs at a very early age. I did so many crazy things. I wanted to prove to people that there's a difference between black and white. I'm not talking about our color. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Two different characters. I'm not yet fully, fully white, but I'm getting there. I'm a work in progress. Sure. Yeah. And that brought a dramatic change. I became the revivalist in my area, early morning, done prayers and preaching, evangelizing, organizing my own crusades, setting up churches and passing them over to pastors. I've done all of it that. It was like a poll of some sort. You absolutely. Know? Yeah. Absolutely. You know, absolutely. you're from this, you know, absolutely. unbearable absolutely. character. But God... And that's a testimony to the power of God, not the power of the will of man. It is God. When God enters into your spirit by his spirit, you cannot resist the transformation. Mm -hmm. True. Yeah. Wow. Great. Now, at some point, I know you are so many other things. Mm. Mm. But then let's get to the music, yeah, which, yeah, you know, yeah. many people know you yeah, for. Yeah. What was the inspiration? At what point did you start singing? Oh, good question. I know most musicians who say that they start singing t t t like when they were young. I will say yes. And I agree with most of them. But speaking for myself, I'll tell you yes. You see, <laughs> music I did not choose. God just blessed me with it. He deposited it into me like a DNA. So inside me is like a force. Everything I do is shrouded in music. Even at school sometimes, I'll be 
writing my engineering, my third degree is in engineering. I'll be writing my engineering exams and I was, by God's grace, I was smart, intelligent. So I'll finish answering all the questions. I'll turn the back of the question paper and write a song with the questions. Oh. So at the point, some of my lecturers in the university are like, come on, you're wasting your time. What are you doing here? I said, don't worry. I love engineering as well. I'm creative. I want to be that, all of that stuff. And then I will sing the song to them in the class. <laughs> so songwriting started very early. And at a time when I started writing very early, I would say eight, seven, eight, my mom was like, oh, sh shut up. You just stole somebody's song. Somebody. I said, no, I, mom, I can hear it. Can you not hear it? You used I can to hear write it in my songs. head. I see you write songs. And mm -hmm. I've got all the books I wrote songs in from childhood. Okay. I have them in my library. So after the transformation, God, you know, got you to now uh, being who you are today. Absolutely. What does worship, what does praise, and what does music mean to you personally? Oh, my gosh. Shut up. Can I pray in tongues when you stroke? <laughs> yeah, music is a very powerful, powerful transforming force. Else God wouldn't have created it. The devil is not the creator of music forms. He's the perverter. He perverted what God created. So we are the restoration of what God intended for music to be. Mm -hmm. Now, I said earlier, God did not create us, to, create us to worship him. There's another fallacy I'm trying to clear out of the body of Christ, hopefully, on every platform. Worship is not a lifestyle. What is it? Your lifestyle is your worship. Amen, yeah, okay, get it. So I'm sure whoever tried to coin that phrase or that catchphrase in the charismatic circles actually meant that my lifestyle in public and private is my worship because that's my response yeah. to my maker. Yeah. Now the, what worship has the same root word in Hebrew, like the word Adam. Adam means, means something that has been taken from the soil. It has to do with work. So whatsoever your hands find to do, do it as unto the Lord in public and in private. Sure. So our lifestyle should be our worship. Otherwise, we will be trying to remove God from certain areas of our lives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's only when we come to the public circle then we worship God. Mm -hmm. But how about private sectors? Mm -hmm. When nobody sees us, what do we do? Sure. I believe that's where worship actually begins from. Mm -hmm. So when Jesus says in spirit and in truth, make sure you mean it in private and in public. Mm -hmm. That's what worship is. So our lifestyle, if we understand that our lifestyle is our worship. So if you're a doctor, a politician, wherever you are, you make sure you're faithful in all these things. You're worshiping God with yeah, the gift of God, God, God to you. Yeah, and the singing. Singing, um, um, you know, good question. I am a stammerer. Did you know that? I didn't. I mean, how yeah, most I? people cannot tell. I'm a stutterer, I stammer a lot. And when I was growing up, I used to beat my head on the wall and then before I speak, I discovered that when I'm singing, I don't do that. So sometimes I'll be communicating, I'll be singing. Wow. Hello, ma'am, how are you doing? How was school today? I'll be doing all of that. I realized that that took away part of the pressure. You now people who stammer is because of atmospheric pressure, either pressure to do something or fear, all of that sort of affects the way we speak. But when we're singing, Kirk Franklin is a stammer. I know many, 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 many people who are great, great artists who are stammerers. But my mom says something, and that's for, uh, 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 for a joke. She said that, if God, she said, I thank God for making a stammer. If you had not made a stammer, I would have been talking too much. Because, <laughs> I mean, I don't think I'm talking to a stammer right now. No, 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 not at all. But it's, so it's singing comes out of that. And again, it's a force with inside of me. Mm -hmm. And it comes out mm -hmm. naturally. Sure. And when I help other people sing well, it makes my day. When wow. I need, see new talents come out to do great things with their voices, with their talents, it gives him the greatest possible joy ever. Wow. So that is my driving force, to with, be honest with you. We thank God. And uh, you are here, and uh, probably as you go, I would love you to give us, uh, to share with us the song that you're going to sing here on this show. And I hope it's in the, into your throne room. Yep. Into your throne room is a testimony. I'll share a little bit. I know that we press for time. Even though I was leading worship, I've led worship for Pastor Benihin, I mean, Archbishop Peter Hosa, many, many people around the world by God's grace, Bishop Makando, Bishop Adnasari, many places. But unknown to many of these great people, I had a complex. Anytime before and after I led worship, I'll hear increasingly accusing voices in my head. Sometimes they were so suicidal. I contemplated suicide many times. What were those voices telling me? You were a sinner. You were fake. You go and do all of that on stage. People were worshipping. You come back. You are sinning. You are still not clean. Da -da 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 -da. So sometimes I feel like I can't contain the two voices. Because my situation, what I find myself in, was not matching my revelation. Mm -hmm. God was giving me some form of revelation of who I was going to be. But my current situation was not matching. So I was stuck between situation and revelation. So that kept me banging my head in and out. 
But one Easter Sunday after I led worship, I laid on my bed, not sleeping because the voices were still coming. And an angel of the Lord in a vision appeared to me and walked me into rooms I call the throne room. I saw the blood of Jesus, Yadabaka Toshere, speaking for us. Not only our worship, our prayers, our lives, everything. That's why Jesus died to shed his blood. From that day, those voices ceased talking to me. And I realized that that room I entered into was the throne room. And my sister Lister, nothing exits heaven and comes to earth without it first being proclaimed or projected or spoken out of the throne room. The throne room is the boardroom. Mm. It's a seat of God's government. That's where decisions are declared. Power is declared. Favor is declared. So when I saw that experience, and I saw people from all nations, all nations, all characters, all character flaws, everybody was before the throne worshiping because the blood was the sieve through which our worship and our praise went. Wow. And so God could not reject the worship and the praise of the saints. And I happy. Yeah, the Abash will take it. Yeah. <laughs> we thank God for his grace. We thank God for his blood. And I didn't understand that, you know, song from this perspective. It really s means so much now. And obviously, I just want to say thank you for coming here. And also, all the best as you do ministry thank you. at Bread of Life. Thank you. And uh, when you go back home, please greet them for us. Absolutely. Sure. And Absolutely. Uh, at this point, I'll get you to sing that beautiful song. And of course, our viewers, I was talking to um, a doctor, uh, Clarion, and of course, he calls himself Mokango, but beautiful revelations that have come from him. At this point, let's just uh, watch this song as he sings unto the Lord, saying into your throne room. <laughs> Into your throne room, I come. Into your throne room, I come. Stepping behind the veil, Jesus, to worship you. Into your throne room, I come. Into your throne room, I come. Into your throne room. Stepping behind 
soul yearns, my heart faints for you. Jesus, my flesh cries out for you. Precious Holy Spirit, I hear your call. I surrender all. I humbly fall. In the beauty of your holiness, according to the excellency of your greatness, I fall to worship. Oh, like Joshua the high priest, I know I've got filthy robes, but I'm still coming. Like Mary Madeline, I hear the voices of the accusers, but I'm still coming. Uh, yes, I've been caught in the act, paraded on the streets, but I'm still coming. Uh, like the leper, I'm shouting, unclean, 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 but I'm still coming, unclean. <laughs> like the woman with issues, I've got more issues, but I'm still coming. Because I'd rather die in the hands of an angry majesty than to live without him. Oh, I'd rather have bad times with you, Jesus, than good times with all else. So I'm stepping behind every veil. If I perish, let me perish. Uh, I'm reaching for the hem of your garment. If I perish, let me perish. I'm screaming, Jesus of Nazareth, have mercy. But I'm still coming. I'm coming blind. I'm coming wounded. I'm coming broken. I'm pushing through the crowd. Uh, if I perish, let me perish. Uh, I come. I Into your throne room and for me believe me the revelation that is behind that song is what just has humbled me just now because I just used to sing it but getting to know where it came from and realizing that hey despite the blemishes that you may have as you come before the Lord to worship I mean the blood of Jesus stands there and makes way for your worship to go through the throne room and to get to heaven I mean I mean God cannot be um, more I mean he's more than this but then you cannot explain his love for us, that he would even make that provision for us. But just now also to say thank you for staying with us. And I hope you learned one, you learned one or two things from the discussion that I had with Bishop Muleya, realizing us, realizing that, you know, 2018, it is well as long as the Lord is there with us. It's almost Christmas and next week we'll be celebrating a reminder, keep the love of Jesus Christ and preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is the reason why he came. This is the reason for the celebration. But for now, let me give room for other programs here as I say goodbye and God bless you.